Fueled by DeathCast. I knew that the road that I was on in the music business was not the was not true to me. You know, mm-hmm. there was just something that had changed so much. And you know, I come from, you know, a legacy. You know, yeah. my father that you know and i just knew that i couldn't do something that wasn't true to me i didn't want to be in the boy band business i wasn't good at writing for britney spears that wasn't my world so i had to let go of that preconceived notion and trust that whatever was going to appear you know and i probably getting a little metaphysical about this but you know when you run into greg daniels on the on the you know on the playground, dropping your kid off from school. And he says something about, Hey, I'm doing this show. It's the office. You want to do the theme song. That's an indication from, you know, a higher source that keep stay on the path because the path will keep revealing itself to you. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, two years after Greg, you know, I worked a bunch on this show, Boston, uh, Boston public. I did some stuff for, uh, the OC with Peter Gallagher, you know, but these were just sort of like, you know, here's some money to keep you going. Here's some stuff. But it was also great because Peter and I became friends and, you know, working on Boston Public, I got to be friendly with Rashida Jones and with Sharon Leal and all these great people. And eventually it led to Kurt and Sons of Anarchy, which really has been, you know, my career ever since. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I don't jump too far out of my, you know, little pool that works for me. Yeah, well, and that's why I wanted to talk to you because, I mean, I really think that your journey is inspiring because, like you've said a couple times, and for our listeners and viewers that might not know, I mean, you did get start out in this music business, you know, writing songs for other people. Like, you worked with um, uh, Bonnie Ray, Ray Charles, and all these people, and then the music business changed, and you had a choice. You could have just stayed in there and hated your day job and cashed your paycheck and created music that you didn't really feel but you you looked at it and just like you said we're like you know let's see where this path can take me and we're open to that opportunity and i think that's very inspiring not just for you specifically but for anybody looking to to do something creative yeah i i I totally agree and that's why i prefaced the last comment with you know this might sound a little esoteric or metaphysical but in fact it's it's You know, whenever I sort of think that I should be doing something that somebody else is doing, Mm -hmm. comparing myself in a way going like, I can do that. But the I can do that is more of a mimic than a true expression of me. You know, that's not true to my nature. You know, I don't know what my true nature is until I'm put into a place where I get to f- get to see it. See, if you had said to me when episode one of Sons started filming that by the end of this ep- by the end of this season, 13 episodes from now, you will have created Forever Young with Audra May and John the Revelator with Curtis. I would have been like, how the hell is that going to get there? That is so inconceivable to me because, first of all, you know, I didn't know Audra. I had no idea of the Dylan song that Forever Young was that I was referencing. There's a much more popular version that everybody knows, but I was doing a version that Dylan had done as a demo before he really recorded the song. So it had a completely different feel. I guess what I'm saying is, is that you have to sort of be a beginner all the time. I was a beginner when I launched into uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Now, beginner, not in the sense of like, what's an A chord, but a beginner in the sense that I don't really have a preconceived notion of what I'm going to do here. So you almost have to have the willingness to fail, you know, to be willing to like, blow it. And, um, you know, that, you know, that was hard for me to do when I was 25 or 35, or even 45, I think, you know, you get to a point in your life where you go like, fuck it, what it's really that's, that's it. Fuck it. Yeah. You know, what what am I gonna fucking do? I, I I've tried it your way. 
I'm done. I don't want to do it your way anymore. Not that I'm so sure my way is going to be the answer for you, but at least I won't be regretting that I sold out in order to make, you know, because if I sell out, it's not going to succeed anyway. You know, I remember the, one of the last things I did in the pop music, you know, when I was where there was a boy band and they liked this song that I had co-written with some friends. And the essence of the song to me was like, what if Bob Marley and Bill Withers got together with Bobby Womack and made a song? Whoa. And that's how I conceived the song. Now, when this song got in the hands of this boy band, by the time we were done with it, there was absolutely no trace of Bobby Womack, Bill Withers, <laughs> you know, or Bob Marley. Right. And I was like, and, and it became kind of a hit. And I was like, man, I just want to bury myself. I don't want any part of this. And that was like the revealing moment. 